or bike with some more red flags amongst the wide receiver crop of fantasy players this year. Yesterday's video, which you guys seem to enjoy very much, because I know y'all are probably toxic and that's why you liked it. No surprise there. Was uh, going through the top 24 running backs in fantasy football, where they're being drafted, their ADP, and then looking at what I consider to be the biggest red flags as it concerns the running back position, right? Things that we could objectively look at and say like, hey, this guy is probably only a two out of five here or a one out of five here. This is a concern I should have. And thus you start to adjust your rankings. You start to adjust where you want to be taking these dudes. And eventually, if you do this correctly throughout, you know, a 16 round draft, you start to draft a, a mix of dudes who have high ceilings and high floors and a little bit of risk here and a little bit of risk there. But if you do so at the right price, the equation tends to work itself out. Looking for my calculator. I'm scrambling right now. I feel like Mr. Fucking Krabs in that meme. I can't find it anywhere. So we're going to not plug my TI-84. But shout out to Texas Instruments for real. Today's video, we're going to look at some uh, some of the wide receivers, but particularly the top 15 wide receivers. And the reason I chose to do top 15 rather than uh, the top 24 or whatever, is if we're being honest, man, outside of the top 15 wide receivers, like if, if you're a fantasy football wide receiver and you don't really have the potential to finish inside the top 15, you don't actually matter right? If a player does not finish inside the top 15 for wide receivers, you are just like 98 other players that you could find on the waiver wire. So we want to stick to the top 15 wide receivers and we want to look at, you know, we're doing actually one particular commonality amongst all of them today. And at the end of this video, you're probably going to be like, I can't believe I wasted all of my time. Can't believe I wasted any of my time listening to this one point that Nick is going to make today. With the running backs, that video I'll link down below, we went into a, a little like row column graph Excel sheet with like 92 different categories. It was like four categories, but it feels like a lot more compared to today. And we really broke it down. Today's not going to be like that, but I still think the takeaway is extremely important when we're looking at like the tiebreakers of of these top dudes all right so we know what we got to do next the next step in the equation to tuck our shirts in it's what we call a ti tuck stop yelling oh, let's eat Real quick plug here for our um, our beautiful esteemed partner, Prize Picks. If you sign up on Prize Picks, you're getting access to our website completely free. All you got to do is deposit on Prize Picks, okay? And during the NBA Finals, Prize Picks keeps putting up lines of like Steph Curry over 0.5 points. Like that shit, they had a Clay Thompson over 0.5 points like two days ago, okay? It's free fucking money over there. So go to Prize Picks, prizepicks.com, or download the app in the App Store. It's the first link in the description. And when you deposit $10 or more using promo code BDGE, they're going to 100% deposit match you, all right? So you're going to have 20 or 40 or 60 to play on it, depending on how much you deposit. So you can go play with that money. And a lot of the time, they're giving out free money on there, okay? So easy dubs for us. I know we take a lot of L's here, which is what this entire fucking video is about, is the L's and the red flags that we're looking for. Prize picks, not the case, okay? So go to prize picks, use promo code BDGE when you deposit $10 or more. You're going to get to play with 100%. Plus, you're going to get you're going to get an email from us the next day giving you access to our website, which will have my season long rankings. It'll have the in-season rankings. It'll have everything you need to prepare for your fantasy football drafts. All right. Pricepicks.com. Let's look at this little chart I made. Okay. This is really fucking simple. This is the top 15 fantasy wide receivers from last year. They're 2021 rank. You'll see the list of players. You will see the team and you will see the quarterback. And I put a little note there for two. Uh, one's a wide receiver. One's not. But if you look at basically any, you know, website that Corderell listed as a wide receiver so you could have played him there so I included him in the rankings just to further my point along you have Debo number two added 365 yards and eight rushing touchdowns you have Corderell at number 10 added 618 rushing yards six rushing touchdowns you will find an extremely strong commonality if you look down that quarterback list of these wide receivers let's list them out Matt Stafford Jimmy G Aaron Rodgers Kirk Cousins Joe Burrow Pat Mahomes, Josh Allen, Tom Brady, Ben Roethlisberger, Matt Ryan, Derek Carr, Russell Wilson, Justin Herbert, Russell Wilson, Justin fucking Herbert. What's the commonality here? All of these guys had awesome quarterbacks throwing to them, okay? All of them. 
90 fucking 4% hit rate. Jimmy G, not an awesome quarterback. Debo had eight rushing touchdowns on the ground. Of course he got in there. Corderell, Matt Ryan at this point in his career, probably not an awesome quarterback. Six rushing touchdowns on the ground. The other ones you could make a case for, Kirk Cousins, dog. All right, don't tell me about Kirk Cousins not being a top 15 quarterback. Derek Carr also show some respect. 4,800 passing yards last year, top five in the league. The one you could really, you know, I'd probably side with you on is, is Big Ben. He was a fucking travesty last year. Uh, Pittsburgh threw the ball at the single highest rate last year. The single highest percentage of their plays were passing plays, okay? So that would account for why Deontay Johnson landed on this list with a travesty of quarterback play um, happening. So I think, realistically, you look at this list, and the only player on there without a top 15 quarterback at this point that also didn't have like a zillion fantasy points via rushing, Deontay Johnson, legitimately only player with bad quarterback play and still finishes a top 15. I legitimately think that you can make an extremely logical and reasonable argument that if you do not have a real top 15 quarterback in the league, a real top 15 thrower, your chance of finishing as a top 15 fantasy wide receiver is wildly slim. All right. This isn't black and white, obviously, but when you're drafting in fantasy, I think the most important thing is not necessarily just focusing on the players, but like having bumpers, like it's like you're bowling, right? And you have these set of bumpers that if you start to stray too far or, you know, too far this way, too far that way. And you're like, I fucking love this guy. I'm gonna take him six rounds above ADP or whatever. The bumpers are there for your safety to be like, you know, let's go along these guidelines. Let's have like an overall general strategy when we're going into these drafts. And this is one of them. It's like, if we're deciding between wide receivers, why the fuck would you take one with a shit wide receiver just because you like his talent? Like the numbers are very, very, very clear. When in doubt, it's always good to side with the best quarterback when you're picking your fantasy wide receiver. It's nothing, it's nothing groundbreaking here, obviously, but it's it's helpful to put real visuals behind it like these graphs to shove it into your face. All right. At the end of the day, all of these wide receivers, these are the best like 20 fucking wide receivers on on planet Earth. I don't think we understand that sometimes. Okay. If you lined up, you ever picture that? You ever think of like when someone's the best on the planet at something, you were to have to gather seven billion people in one place and then you know god goes up in the front and he goes who are the 20 best wide receivers and literally like the 20 of 7 billion people float up and these are these fucking guys at 20 of 7 billion they're all incredible all of them are stupidly talented okay so the more accurate the quarterback is that's throwing the ball to them that's really going to be the difference maker here man and again it's obviously uh, it's a very obvious statement but most people don't take it seriously enough in fantasy so here are the top 20 wide receivers right now according to adp on the right side i highlighted in green the quarterbacks that i think you know without a doubt occupy that top list of really good passing quarterbacks top 15 without a doubt again it's the stafford cousins burrow Carr, allen Prescott, Brady, Herbert, Burrow, Russell Wilson, Tom Brady. That takes care of like half the list. There is still like another 10 dudes right now being picked with quarterbacks that are either wildly unproven or we know are not going to have a lot of volume. We know at this point in their career are just not great passing quarterbacks. All right. So we have Tyree Kill with Tua. We have Debo with Trey Lance. We have A.J. Brown with Jalen Hurts. Deontay Johnson with now Kenny Pickett or uh, Mitch Trubisky. Terry McLaurin with Carson Wentz. D.K. Metcalf with, uh, I don't know, fucking Bridgewater or Drew Locke. D.J. Moore with Sam Darnold. Amari Cooper with looking less and less likely to be Deshaun Watson. Jacoby Brissett. Jalen Waddell also with Tua. So for me, if we start to take into account both the price and the situation and the quarterback we're getting thrown the ball by, Tyreek Hill is terrifying to me. His ADP is wide receiver six, but 15 overall. There's a lot going on with Hill, right? We have this wide receiver on a new team. First off, historically, wide receivers on a new team, which has been disproven, obviously. There's been good good production from wide receivers moving to a new team over over recent years. But historically, they don't always blast off in year one, okay? And if Tyreek Hill's not blasting off, I don't want him as the wide receiver six. We have Tua at quarterback. We don't know what he's going to be like. And this is my biggest concern. It's like, even if Tua is a usable NFL quarterback, his skill set does not match Tyreek Hill's anywhere near what Patrick Mahomes is did. And the problem is, like, I could see Tyreek Hill being on the list in the same way that Deontay Johnson did. Like, if there's anyone who's going to be top 10, it's it's like Tyreek Hill here. But there's there's no way that Tua is attempting anywhere near the same amount of passes that Big Ben or just the Pittsburgh offense did last year. And obviously, it's a completely new staff. Um, it's not like McDaniels is this, like, super pass-heavy guy. You know, they spoke pretty fucking loudly about wanting to, the ground game to be a big part of their offense by adding Chase Edmonds and Raheem Moster and Sony Michelle. They got, like, 92 fucking running backs back there. Yeah, one of them will probably be cut, but, like, the vision and what they're doing speaks very loudly about how they see this offense running this year. So he'll obviously have his games, but I'm just not excited about him. And then you have Debo. 
Okay, so Debo at pick 21. And Trey Lance might be great for fantasy. But again, the top 15 quarterbacks, we're talking about like top 12, top 15 quarterbacks. We're talking about in terms of like throwers, ones who are put up prolific passing numbers. And you have these running quarterbacks like Trey Lance, who will probably be a very run heavy quarterback that'll put up, you know, 600, 700, 800 yards on the ground. They don't, they very rarely support elite fantasy wide receivers, right? Like some of them, uh, of course, do. But I think the ones that are able to do it, like Josh Allen or Kyler or whatever, are not run first. They're pocket passers first that use their legs to damage the defense. Trey Lance seems like a guy who's going to be just as run heavy as he is pass heavy. I don't think anyone, even if he becomes a great passing quarterback, we can't even close to reasonably expect Trey Lance to be thrown for 4,500 yards in year one. And one of the points I made was like, okay, you don't have to have an elite quarterback if you're going to be running the ball a ton. And Debo was the guy who did that last year. And I've echoed this a few times this offseason already. But like with Debo, the agent's already complaining about shit. You know, the agent doesn't want him to play the same way he did last year. Less carries, fewer carries, fewer, less product. I don't know. Something's off here with Debo. It's just It's just early. It's a red flag. It's a red, red flag for me. OK, AJ Brown. Not telling you anything new here. ADP of 24. The Eagles are wildly run heavy. Jalen Hurts is not going to be a top 10 passer anytime soon here. Brown is also, you know, competing with some good competition in Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard. And this is just an offense that's not going to be passing ball 30. They'll probably be passing ball 30 times a game, which is super, super fucking low volume. All right. So AJ Brown, huge, huge red flag for me there. As we move down the list, like DK Metcalf, super fucking obvious. But again, like you don't want a guy like DK Metcalf who excels down the field connecting with Russell Wilson on these 60 yard bombs, playing with a dude like Teddy Bridgewater, whose average depth of throw is like a yard and a half or Drew Locke, whose average depth of throw is 60 and a half, but his accuracy rating is like 32%. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a, there's a give and take. Neither of these quarterbacks fit what DK Metcalf does. One slings it horribly. One doesn't sling it at all. And DK Metcalf needs someone who is accurate downfield, which is why he was so prolific with Russell Wilson. So obviously another big flag. He did play well with Teddy Bridgewater in a super limited sample size. Geno Smith, excuse me, Geno Smith, but Teddy Bridgewater a little better than Geno Smith regardless. I did, I'm just not taking a tiny sample size like that and, and making it into something about how I'm excited to draft DK Metcalf this year with fucking Drew Locke or Teddy Bridgewater. They're going to be shuffling those quarterbacks. There's going to be times when Teddy Bridgewater's under center and then Drew Locke's under center and they both throw fucking six picks a game. Offense is going to be terrible. They're going to be losing by 40 points and still going to try to be a run heavy team. Well, nothing to do with DK Metcalf. And then DJ Moore is the other obvious one, man. DJ Moore is the other one down at wide receiver 16. Sam Darnold, right? People want to say like, oh, this is his floor. This is his floor. He keeps putting up the same fucking numbers year over year. It's not his floor. It's his fucking average, meaning he can go above or below that. And when you have Sam Darnold at quarterback, there's a chance he goes below that. Okay. So if they, if they get Baker Mayfield, yes, that's an upgrade for DJ Moore for sure. Like Baker Mayfield is just a, a slightly more accurate version of Sam Darnold, which I think works in DJ Moore's favor. But for right now, as long as Sam Darnold's under center, that's a problem. Amari Cooper with Jacoby Brissett under center, that's a problem. Jalen Waddle with two under center, that's a problem because he's going to be dipping from the volume that he got last year. Okay. He was a volume guy last year. Doesn't mean he can't make plays down the field, but they did not let the offense open up for Jalen Waddle. And if they're not going to let him do that, if he's not going to open it up, now we have Tyreek Hill playing the Debo role, which means a lot of passes at the line of scrimmage, screen game, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Jalen Waddle, I mean, he's not going to be bad. I'm sure he'll put up a thousand yards, but like, I'm not excited about a thousand yard receiver, right? I dropped that stat a couple of weeks ago or, you know, last week or whatever, that over the last three or four years, on average, there's like 27 players that go over a thousand yards, like a thousand yards as a receiver is not impressive. That's not something I'm excited to draft. I need someone who has upside. I need someone who has a good chance of finishing with 1300 yards. Otherwise, everyone kind of falls into the same mix, you make the same gross cocktail that you've been making since college and no one's fucking impressed anymore. Grow up, grow up. That's what this episode's about. It's no more red flags. We're growing up. We're not taking guys with red flags. Green fucking flags only here on out. Sheesh. Okay. That's all I got for today. Sorry it was terrible. You deserve better. But you need to start treating yourself better before you deserve better. How's that? How's that for a life lesson from Nicholas? All right. I'm out of here. I love y'all. I will see you. I think Noah has a video tomorrow. We have a vlog Thursday. I'll see y'all on Friday. Bye.